When it comes to OL Reign, and we're looking at young prospects to keep an eye on for 2022, who are you looking at to possibly have an impact for this team in 2022, Lisa? I think we have to look at the goalkeepers, like you just mentioned, Sandra. They're who I am keeping an eye on because right now, Owell Rain doesn't have a starting goalkeeper. Um, and they brought in two in the NWSL draft, like you mentioned, in Claudia Dickey and Laura Ivory. But they also have Falone Tulis Joyce, who can fight for that starting position because right now, it is completely up for grabs. Usually we kind of look at the starting 11 and we see what, what standouts we have. And for a lot of other clubs, we've been able to name at least a, a goalkeeper that we're like, okay, you could get the start here. But for OL Reign, um, I, I think it's completely up for grabs right now. And I even could foresee at, at the start of this 2022 season, Laura Harvey playing different goalkeepers based on the competition that they're facing and trying out um, these three young goalkeepers to see who does well in game situations and game scenarios, because you can do a lot in training. Um, and, and yes, these goalkeepers are going up against some very good forwards, a really good midfield squad, but it's different when you're going up against other opponents and other clubs, different threats that other teams provide, whether it's quickly in transition or it's over the top balls or it's shots from distance. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on these young goalkeepers and especially the new draft picks in Claudia Dickey and Laurel Ivory. Uh, Dickey coming from UNC uh, picked in this draft, the 2022 draft and Ivory coming from UVA. Can they prove themselves, get minutes, which is really tough to do as a goalkeeper. But I, I'm keeping an eye on these young players to see which one kind of wiggles out as uh, more Ept at playing in goal for Laura Harvey and Noel Rain. I like that. I'll be inter I'll be interested to see if maybe that comes into play. Like maybe that would be some type of X factor for for the Rain, where you're not too sure which which goalkeeper you're gonna gonna see. But I mean, I think that's I'm with you in terms of the biggest opportunity there and and young players to take a look at in terms of maybe the attacking side. I think we have to take a keep an eye on Ziara King, right? She's only 23. She was drafted out of NC State, uh, you know, initially arrived to all rain, maybe didn't see a ton of minutes, was coming, was more of a player to come off of the bench, right, and create an impact for the team. But the 23 year old is one of these players that we talked about uh, signing a multi year contract with this club and when you see something like that uh you imagine that there is intention behind that right to sort of uh you know investment that you're going to retain this player and have them be a part of what you are you know the goals that you are working towards and having to achieve so in terms of the, that draft class specifically, right, having been impacted uh, primarily by the pandemic and, and not necessarily having a first full rookie season, right, just sort of having that 2020 challenge cup to go off of and then continue taking these steps in your pro career. I'm absolutely excited to see what Ziara could bring uh, yeah. you know, for this attacking line of what this offense looks like in 2022. I am really excited to see what they can bring, um, honestly. But I think they have to rely a lot on on Jess Fishlock as uh, the MVP in 2021 coming into this squad to kind of bring it all together, right? She has the experience. She has the international experience playing with her Scottish international team and, and that nation to – uh, bring Ziara King up to speed. I mean, Ziara King has a lot, a lot of potential, but I want to see her grow. But frankly, like these players are in a great spot because they have Laura Harvey as their head coach, who has been uh, across the world as a coach, uh, U23, U.S. Women's National Team, the youth programs in England. She's been with other English clubs. She's been at Seattle Reign previously and now back in the NWSL. She knows the clubs. She knows the league. She knows the different teams um, and she can provide a lot for these players I'm excited to see what can really happen for this team I am too I'm with you 100% on uh, the essential experience player that this team is going to have to rely on they've got a number to pick mm -hmm. from right but I think you're 100% Correct, and going with the 2021 MVP Jess Fishlock right the Welsh yeah. Dragon uh, although I mean when we look at the international spotlight, right, like you said, these are players that could be there's players that are going to possibly be coming in and out 
of season, right? We are taking a look at the U.S. side of things. Somebody like Alana Cook, Sophia Huerta, Roosevelt, possibly Megan Rapino, Bethany Balser was part of those end of year camps, right? In 2021, yeah. including the January camps as well. So there's there's players here on the U.S. side of things, uh, you know, that could possibly be in and out. Jess Fishlock representing, uh, you know, uh, the Welsh Dragon and possibly going to be gone as well uh, with Euros kind of coming up and, and and UEFA kind of kicking things off. There's And even with just international windows, right? We're forgetting about uh, Quinn in terms of representing the, the Canadian national team. So there's a number, even though like people are seeing like, hey, like, there's an international spotlight and somebody like Amarazan isn't a part of it anymore. Somebody like Lace Omer isn't around anymore. Somebody like Buadi isn't around anymore. That doesn't mean there's not an international spotlight yeah. on this team. It, it doesn't have to be a loan that's coming in, which honestly we could see that happen, right? I mean, loans are still possible. Um, and because of OL Reign and their connection with Olympic Lyon in France, we could see uh, a, a bit of transition happening between these clubs as well. Uh, but yeah, huge international spotlight. There's a lot of big time players on this, this squad. I think Quinn is a huge one because when Quinn is playing with the Canadian national team, Oh, well, Rain loses a lot in their midfield um, because Quinn is such a good player. They have such great vision of the field. They have a great ability to spray the ball out and, and break out of tough, tough tackles. It's a very odd thing to kind of explain to play, to people watching Quinn and play, whether it's with the with the Canadian national team or with OL Rain, because when Quinn is on the pitch, um, you don't recognize them necessarily. However, the moment that they leave and they are subbed out, that's when you notice the giant yeah. hole in the midfield. That's when you notice that yeah. OL Reign has lost their possessive momentum that they have. That's when you notice that teams can't transition as well because when Quinn is there, you don't notice it because it's just so seamless. The game is not about them. It's about progressing the ball forward. So internationally, when CONCACAF windows happen and the W championship, because a lot of U.S. national players will be gone, Quinn will also be gone. That's going to leave some big holes yeah. for Laura Harvey to try to fill and, and patch up. And, you know, we've seen oftentimes, right, when it comes to NWSL competition, how sometimes these games can really be won and lost, right, in that middle third, sort of having, a, uh, you know, their their absence in that midfield with Quinn missing potentially is, is going to be huge, like you said. So there's going to be stretches of time during this 2022 season that this rain team will probably be tested in other ways that, you know, maybe are more than just, you know, on, on the pitch and in a regular week and when we go through the roster right when we talk about laura harvey with this side and having a full season in front of her right not jumping in mid-season but having a full season in front of her start to finish mm -hmm. potentially for this team it leads us to our biggest burning question right and that's really can laura harvey finally win an nwsl championship with this rain franchise she's it's official she made her return to the National Women's Soccer League, rejoined the Reign franchise mid-2021. Sam Lady briefly had the reins for a little bit of the team as they started to navigate the second half of that season. And Laura Harvey coming in like a combo breaker saying, we're going to go, right? So players having the buy-in, responding to her coaching, and then going on and having the run that they did was very, very impressive. But it, they ultimately fell short of a couple of their goals. When you talk to, you know, the coaching staff or when you talk to players, they said, we, we wanted the shield. We wanted that in the middle championship. And they fell short on a couple different uh, goals there, right? So when we're looking at, and asking, is this going to be the year where Laura Hari finally wins the championship with the rain? I don't know. This is also a year where the NWSL is expanding. Yes. The competition is leveling out even more than we had probably a, a imagine in years past so going from a 10 club league to now a 12 club league but i don't know lisa what let's just roll into the projected finish and maybe adjacent to that you can answer do you think this is the year and where do you think they're gonna end up in 2022 i i think that it's not for lack of want 
<laughs> I yep. think that Laura Harvey wants it so bad. Yeah. And I think that Megan Rapino, Rose Lavelle, Quinn, Jess Fishlock, they want it so bad. It's not for lack of want or effort or commitment to it. It's just if kind of all the pieces can fall correctly, if they can get out to a quick start at, at the beginning of the 2021 season. Um, uh, and, and who knows, maybe this is the year for Laura Harvey. It's uh, okay. Projected finish for us. I'm keeping them at the top. I think that they will definitely make playoffs in 2022. Um, I don't think they'll win the shield. I don't think they'll outright win um, kind of, the the shield for 2022 and and get that number one spot but i see them at number two i see them getting that first round by being a namesake and solidifying their spot high in the rankings early on it's not going to come down to the final week or so of games and it's not going to come down to uh, uh, laura harvey is not going to let her team's standings be determined by other teams play so they will win themselves and do what they need to do to solidify their spot in the standings. Um, Sandra, for you, I kind of want to throw a, a curveball question at you. Laura Harvey is an incredible coach. She's a three-time NWSL coach of the year. Will she win coach of the year? And will she win an NWSL championship? Like, will she win one without the other? Which one is more likely for her in 2022? Gosh, which one is more likely for her? Yeah. I think what's more likely is is potentially coach of the year. Yeah. But I could tell you what I want to see. What I want to see is I want to see the championship. I would love to say <laughs> Laura Harvey, NWSL champion. Um, I'm I'm with you on, on everything that you're saying. I think that we we had them in number two in our power rankings, you know, when we did our early power rankings in December. And I think it's it's a safe place to keep them. I think it's it's not unfair to keep them at number two. Just because maybe you end up number two in the standings doesn't mean you can't go on to win an NWSL championship. That's always a possibility, right? Whether you're one through six <laughs> in the table now when it comes to NWSL. Uh, so I, I feel comfortable leaving them there. I would love uh, to see them go on to 2022 and have a ton of success on the pitch. It's a, it's a roster, I think, with a, an exciting core. Right. With a mix of, of veterans and and experienced players and young prospects as well. But I think we nailed it, honestly, in December. And I would I, I know we've been saying a lot. We'd love to come back and be proven wrong, but I'd actually love to be come back and be maybe be proven right on this yeah, me too. one that maybe I'll take, you know. Yeah. Uh, so so we will we will see. 